Hello, my name is Bernard Jenkins, and today we'll be talking about a significant educational milestone that has changed the way we have seen standardized testing in America. In 2015, President Obama joins the Too Much Testing movement. His new plan calls for limiting standardized testing to no more than 2% of class time. In order to further understand this significant event, I'll be talking through the background, we're talking through significance, a little bit of relevance of this decision, and then you'll be able to review the references at the end. The story of standardized testing in America education over the past two decades is one of expansion, unintended consequences, and eventual pushback. Our tale begins in 2001 with the No Child Left Behind Act. This landmark legislation dramatically increased standardized testing requirements in schools across the nation. The goal was noble to improve educational outcomes and hold schools accountable for student performance. Suddenly, students were taking far more standardized tests, starting as early as third grade. Schools and teachers felt immense pressure to raise test scores, often at the expense of other educational priorities. Fast forward to 2009. The Obama administration launches its ambitious race to the top program. While intentioned, while well-intentioned, this initiative further amplified the focus on testing. States were incentivized to expand their use of standardized tests, trying results to teacher evaluations and school accountability measures. The stakes grew even higher with teachers, careers, and school funding now closely linked to test performance. As testing expanded, so did concerns about its impact. Teachers complained about teaching to the test rather than focusing on creativity and critical thinking. Parents worried their children were experiencing too much stress and anxiety around frequent high stake exams. Education advocates questioned whether the benefits of all this testing outweighed the cost in terms of lost instructional time and narrowed curricula. By 2015, the backlash had reached a fever pitch. A grassroots opt-out movement gained steam with parents refusing to let their children take standardized tests. Teachers unions, long skeptical of using test scores to evaluate their members, became increasingly vocal in their opposition. Even some politicians who had previously championed testing began to question whether things had gone too far. This groundswell of opposition led to a moment of reflection. Policymakers, educators, and parents alike began to ask how much testing is truly necessary. What are we gaining and what are we losing? This intense focus on standardized, standardized assessments. In 2015, the Obama administration made a significant shift in its approach to standardized testing in schools. This change was sparked by, revealing, by a revealing report from which the Council of the Great City Schools, which found that students were taking an astounding average of 112 mandatory standardized tests between pre-K and 12th grade. Education Secretary Arne Duncan, recognizing the need for change, played a pivotal role in developing and announcing new testing guidelines. The cornerstone of this initiative was a recommendation to cap standardized testing at 2% of classroom time. This move was a direct response to growing concerns from educators, parents, and students. Many felt that excess excessive testing was eating into valuable instruction time and causing unnecessary stress for both students and teachers. It represented a marked departure from the administration's previous stance, which had heavily emphasized test-based accountability. The Department of Education didn't stop at just announcing the cap. They also planned to issue guidance to states and districts on how to reduce unnecessary testing. This comprehensive approach aimed to create a more balanced assessment landscape in American schools. It's important to note that this policy shift wasn't happening in isolation. It was part of a broader effort to reauthorize the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. This process ultimately culminated in the passage of the Every Student Succeeds Act in December of 2015, marking a new chapter in federal education policy. In essence, 
This initiative signaled a recognition that while assessment is important, it shouldn't come at the cost of quality instruction and student well-being. It was an attempt to strike a balance between accountability and the need for well-rounded, less test-centric education. Overall, this decision marked a significant shift in federal approach to education assessment. The initiative acknowledged the growing opt-out movement where parents and educators were increasingly refusing to participate in standardized tests. This grassroots movement had gained momentum as concerns grew about the overemphasis on testing in schools. By encouraging states and school districts to develop more comprehensive assessment systems, the Obama administration opened the door for innovative approaches to evaluating student progress. This push for diversity in assessment methods sparked ongoing debates about the role of testing in education. The impact of this milestone continues to resonate in education policy today. We've seen sustained efforts to reform assessment practices across the country, with many states and districts exploring alternatives to traditional standardized tests. Perhaps most significantly, there's been an increased focus on experiential learning approaches. This shift recognizes that student growth and achievement can't always be captured by standardized tests and that hands-on real-world learning experiences are crucial for developing well-rounded students. This initiative didn't just stop at the federal level. While the government couldn't mandate the 2% testing limit, the announcement sent a powerful message to states and school districts across the country. It encouraged them to take a hard look at their own testing practices and consider ways to reduce unnecessary assessments. This push for change addressed a long-standing concern for teachers. For years, educators had been voicing their frustration about the narrowing of curriculum due to excessive testing. They felt pressured to teach the tests, focusing primarily on content that would appear on standardized exams rather than providing a well-rounded education. By limiting test time, the Obama administration policy aimed to alleviate this pressure and give teachers more freedom to explore diverse teaching methods and subjects. Ultimately, this shift in federal policy underscored the need for a more balanced approach to assessment and instruction. It recognized that while testing has its place in education, it should not dominate the learning experience. Instead, the goal became, became to strike a balance, using assessment as tools to inform instruction and measure progress, but not at the expense of rich, engaging learning experience. This move towards balance opened the door for more innovative approaches to education, encouraging schools to explore alternative methods of evaluating students' progress and success. It marked a significant step toward a more holistic view of education, one that values not just test scores, but the overall growth and development of students. The decision to reduce standardized testing has had a huge relevance in today's education arena. The issue of excessive standardized testing disproportionately affecting students from diverse backgrounds, particularly in under-resourced schools, has been a growing concern in education. This disparity highlights a significant challenge in our current assessments. Nordvelt and colleagues in their 2020 study emphasized the need for culturally responsive assessment in our increasingly globalized world. They argue that traditional assessment methods often fail to account for the diverse cultural backgrounds and ways of learning that students bring to the classroom. This oversight can lead to inaccurate evaluation of student abilities and potential, especially for migrant students and those from minority cultures. The authors proposed that we typically considered valid and reliable assessment practices may need to be adjusted to account for students' cultural ways of knowing and participating. This means rethinking how we design and implement assessments to ensure that they're inclusive and, represent, and a representative of all students' experiences and knowledge. Norster and Wayne's 2017 study 
takes this argument further, drawing a direct link between the standardized testing and school segregation. They contend that the emphasis on standardized testing has exasperated existing inequalities in education. Schools serving predominantly minority and low income students often face intense pressure to raise test scores, leading to a narrowing of curriculum and a focus on test preparation at the expense of broader educational experiences. This pressure can result in a self-perpetuating cycle where schools with lower test scores receive less funding and resources, further disadvantaging their students. The authors argue that this system effectively reinforces and even increases racial and social economic segregation in schools. Both studies underscore the urgent need for a nuance, a more nuanced and culturally responsible approach to assessment. They call for methods that recognize and value the diverse strength and experiences of all students, rather than relying on a one size fits all approach that often favors students from more privileged backgrounds. As we move forward, it's crucial to develop assessment practices that are not only academically rigorous, but also culturally inclusive and equitable. This shift is ex essential for creating an educational system that truly serves all students, regardless of their background or the resources available in their schools. Another way that this decision was relevant when it comes to promoting equity in schools. The shift away from heavy reliance on standardized testing opens up opportunities for schools to allocate more resources toward diverse learning experiences that could benefit all students, particularly those from underrepresented backgrounds. This approach has the potential to promote greater equity in education. Stoy, Snyder, and Wilsack's 2018 study examined how states are integrating performance assessments into their assessment systems. They found that performance assessments, when implemented thoughtfully, can provide more authentic ways to measure student learning compared to traditional standardized tests. These assessments often require students to demonstrate their knowledge and skills through real-world tasks, which can be more engaging and meaningful for diverse learners. The authors highlight that performance assessments can offer a more holistic view of student abilities, capturing skills that may be overlooked in standardized tests. This is particularly important with students from diverse backgrounds whose strengths may not always be reflected in traditional testing formats. However, the study also notes challenges in implementing performance assessments, including concerns about consistency and comparability across schools and districts. This underscores the need for careful planning and support when transitioning to more diverse assessment methods. TIE's 2024 review provides further insight into how students experience inclusive assessment. Their findings suggest that when assessments are designed with inclusivity in mind, student feels more engaged and better to able demonstrate their learning. The authors emphasize the importance of offering choice and assessment methods, allowing students to play to their strength and express their knowledge in ways that feel authentic to them. This approach can be particularly beneficial for students from diverse cultural and linguistic backgrounds who may have different ways of demonstrating their understanding. Moreover, the review highlights the value of formative assessment practices that provide ongoing feedback and opportunities for improvement. These practices can help create a more supportive learning environment where students feel empowered to take risks and learn from their mistakes. By reducing the emphasis on standardized tests and embracing more diverse assessment methods, schools create more equitable learning environments that recognize and value the diverse strengths and experiences of all students. This shift not only promotes equity, but also has the potential to enhance the overall quality of education by providing richer, more meaningful learning experiences for all students. The final relevance of this 2015 decision calls for encouraging alternative assessments. The move away from traditional standardized testing have opened up the opportunities for more culturally responsive 
and inclusive assessment methods that better reflect the diverse strength and abilities of students. This shift recognizes that a one size fits all approach to assessment often fails to capture the full range of student capabilities, particularly those from diverse cultural backgrounds. Tai, in their 2023 study published in Higher Education Research and Development, introduced the concept of assessment for inclusion. They argue that the traditional assessment practices often inadvertently disadvantage certain groups of students, particularly those from non-dominant cultural background. The authors propose rethinking assessment design to ensure that diverse students are not marginalized by assessment practices. One key aspect of their framework is the idea that assessment choice. This approach allows students to demonstrate their learning in ways that align with their strengths and cultural backgrounds. For example, students might be given options to present their knowledge through written, work, oral presentations, or creative projects. This flexibility can help students showcase their abilities in the ways that feel authentic to their experiences and ways of thinking. The authors also emphasize the importance of authentic assessment, which involves tasks that are meaningful and relevant to student lives and future careers. This approach can be particularly beneficial for students from diverse backgrounds, as it allows them to draw on their unique experiences and perspective. Humanity's 2020 report for the Center for American Progress, while focused on assessment during the COVID-19 pandemic, it offers insights that are relevant to this broader shift towards a more inclusive assessment. The author highlights how the disruption caused by the pandemic forced educators to rethink their assessment practices, leading to more flexible and diverse approaches. The author argues that this moment of change presents an opportunity to move towards more equitable assessment systems. She suggests that alternative assessments such as project-based learning and performance tasks can provide a more comprehensive picture of student learning and skills. These method methods often allow for greater cultural responsiveness as they can be designed to incorporate students' diverse experiences and knowledge bases. Moreover, Jimenez points out that these alternative assessment methods can help address longstanding inequities in education by providing multiple pathways for students to demonstrate their learning. This aligns with the goal of cultural responsive assessment, which seeks to recognize and value the diverse ways in which students from different backgrounds may express their knowledge and skills. In conclusion, the shift towards alternative assessments have indeed opened doors for more culturally responsive and inclusive evaluation methods. By moving away from standardized testing and embracing more flexible, authentic, and diverse assessment, assessment approaches, educators can better capture the full range of student abilities, particularly for those from diverse cultural backgrounds. This shift not only promotes equity, but also enriches the educational experience for all students by recognizing and valuing their unique strengths and perspectives. In summary, over the past two decades, we witnessed a significant evolution in the approach to standardized testing and assessment in American education. From the increased testing requirements of No Child Left Behind in 2001 to the Obama administration's 2015 initiative to limit testing, we've seen a growing recognition of the need for balance in our assessment practices. This shift has been driven by concerns about the overuse of standardized tests, their impact on curriculum, and the stress they place on students and teachers. Importantly, it has also highlighted the dis disproportionate effects of excessive testing on students from diverse backgrounds and under-resourced schools. The move towards alternative assessments open doors for more culturally responsible and inclusive evaluation methods. It encourages a more holistic view of student abilities, recognizing that traditional standardized tests often fail to capture the full range of skills and knowledge, particularly for students from diverse cultural backgrounds. As we continue to reform our assessment practices, the focus is increasingly on promoting equity, providing more authentic learning experiences, 
and develop assessment methods that truly reflect the diverse strengths and abilities of all students. This ongoing evolution in educational assessment represents a significant step towards creating a more inclusive, equitable, and effective education system for all learners.